Are we on? We're live. Suncoast Technical College. Here we are with our red shirts from our Haas dealership in Tampa. Hi, Mom. Hey, hey, hi, Mom. All right, good. Right next to our antique Atlas drill press, which we were monkeying around with earlier. Yeah, Jeremy taking a liking to it. So. All right, we're going to do an old school setup over here. Old school meaning like the first way I was taught in 1984 with a edge finder and uh, tool touch-offs of various methods. So we're going to use a uh, edge finder, so we got to call up the drill chuck, which is uh, in this machine in tool 9. I go into setup mode, I usually turn my rapids down. Let's go, this is a slow running rapid machine. 50% will be pretty good for this. Alright, so go to MDI. MDI. Right. So it's T9. Tool 9, yep. And if you do ATC, that's a quick way of changing on this machine. Or we can type in the code T9, M6, and MDI, which pretty much works in every machine. Okay, so we got a drill chuck now. Do we know what RPM it's running? Actually, let's shut the doors. Hit the clockwise button, right? It's not even turning on. It does have no RPM. Or it might have been running all day, and this thing goes 6,000 RPM. So if you hit clockwise, it's going to run whatever RPM it ran. So let's put in the RPM you would run over on the Bridgeport Manual Mill. 750. 750. And which direction do you want it to go in? Which would be M3. M3. Right. Okay, here's a program, cycle set to run the program. Okay, now it's running with no edge finder, but that's okay. We'll just hit the stop button. All right, now let's open the doors and throw our edge finder in there. Okay, let's go get an edge finder. I'll get one for you. Hope you have it. Okay. Notice we rehearse all our stuff, so. All right. Righty tighty. Yeah. Depends on which way you're looking at. All right. all right. Okay, so we're using the edge finder with a 200 thou tip on it, so that'll be a 100 thou radius. Okay. If you're clockwise right now, it'll power up. And actually, you would only. This machine will only run 750 with the doors open. So if we had programmed 1500 and we opened the doors, it would go down to 750, which we find is adequate for doing edge finding. All right, so that looks pretty good. We can stop the spindle, so we need to put a piece in the vise. We're using soft jaws. We got some material already cut for this job. Yep, bring the table closer to you. It's always pretty helpful. We're doing this job right here, programming master cam. We need to get this upper left coordinate up here, and we also also do a work shift afterwards. So here's our coordinates, G54, X, Y, Z. Okay. All right, so we're going to go flush to the left edge for our loading position. There we go. Now soft jaws cut about 200 deep, so we have enough material to cut around the whole piece. Okay, so we can do this with the door open so we can turn on the spindle, hand jog, large or extra large, there you go, and pick a direction. I like doing what you're doing, having the spindle running. I like to give the edge finder a fighting chance. All right, so let's do the... I like to do things in order, so let's do X first. Right. Looks pretty good. Okay. So you're in 10 thou per click mode right now. And bring it in, and you might have to look at that 45 degree angle. Yeah, there you go. Watch it click off.
There we go. All right, so we're going to accept that one, right? So right now we are at machine coordinate 27314. So if we go to the offset page, I mean, we could manually type that in. Let's actually just try that. Type that in. Yep, 0.314. And we have two ways of entering. This adds and subtracts. I like calling this force or F1. We'll overwrite the number. Yep, I'll force it to be that number. Of course, we have to account for the radius of the tool and the other coordinate shift on the setup sheet. Well, it's actually, um, if I would have wiped this out and say, oops, I lost your offset on you. Um, let's use this one, part zero set. And that actually just takes this number and puts it up here. Okay, good. Uh, the only thing uh, jumps over, so you need to do some more coordinate shifting. So that is 100 thousandths, correct? Yeah. And which way are you going to shift it? Uh, positive. Positive. So let's do an addition there. Yep. Okay, that makes sense. All right. Now, if I look at my setup sheet here, next to my flutless tap I just dropped, okay. It says right here, shift the X plus 50 thousandths. Yeah. Right there. Okay, so we're going to do another additional shift. And then to that one. Good. All right. Uh, that height's pretty good. You can just walk around the corner and get to the other side. So if you go in the Y direction... Okay. Let's make sure you're clear. Yeah. That looks pretty good right there. This uh, direction is always easier to see. So that's going to be our Y coordinate right there, 2.974. So we're going to use the use the part zero set again. Yep. Let's go back and we'll do our shifts. So we're shifting 100, negative. going negative direction. Good. All right. And enter. And also we're shifting another 50 in the same direction. Good. All right. Let's raise the spindle up. Goody. All right, let's uh, kill the spindle. We either stop or reset button will work. All right, let's uh, position it over the coordinate and make sure it looks correct. And we can actually take a pointy tool if we want. But let's like write a little code in here. Go to MDI and erase that code. All right, so type in G0 for rapid. G90 for absolute positioning, G54 for the work coordinate you're using, and the position is going to be X0, Y0. Enter that one. Okay. Go to uh, your MDI, so shut the doors, and cycle start. So that should position over the XY right now. So now if we even took this tool right here, center drill, Let's swap tools right now. Yep. Very good. All right, so bring that down so it's over the corner. And you can verify if you're on target, if you shifted the correct way. And that looks pretty good. All right, good. And in this case, because we're going old school, we're going to leave zero on this offset. We're going to do all the tool length offsets with uh, all the positionings for Z are going to be from tool length offset. So let's bring that back up. We'll put the drill chuck back in. And then we'll go to tool offset. 